what is up everybody the hunter gt with the hunter gt.com that's right go check out the website what is going on today got the technetics omega 8500 in the house pretty excited about that why because i already reviewed the alpha 2000 the delta 4000 the gamma 6000 but i never got around to reviewing the omega 8000 or their trump card here the 8500 finally got it in pretty happy about that other good news, I am now a Technetics Fisher Bounty Hunter dealer. So if you want to pick up any of the first Texas metal detectors there, who are you going to email? Me, of course, the thehuntergt at gmail.com or use the contact form over on the website, thehuntergt.com. Well, here we go. Let's take a look. I always like to take a look at the box before we review any detector. 10-inch elliptical waterproof concentric search coil, narrow pinpoint range, three-pole system, adjustable stem, quarter inch headphone jack, big easy to read LCD display, padded hand grip, adjustable arm strap, the arc stand, and the padded arm rest. Five year warranty made in the US of A. Let's flip it over to the other side here. And what do we got on this side? All sorts of features here. I'm not gonna read over every last one. Pause the video right now if you want to read over every last one, but it does have a backlight, that waterproof search coil, notching controls, ground mineralization readout, VCO, VCO base tone, selectable VCO base tone, uh, choice of three tones plus VCO, digital target ID, visual background, iron ID, all sorts of good stuff there on this bad boy. It runs at 7.7 .7 kilohertz, great on silver and copper coins. I consider it to be a very good coin shooter, honestly. I've used one before, I got quite a few hours on one. I just never got around to reviewing it. So here we go. Without further ado, what do you say we rip this bad boy out of the box? Check out the features of the menu. Put it together, all that good stuff. Then we'll run it through some nail tests, some air tests. You know how we do it here on the Hunter GT. Let's go have some fun. All right, here we go. We have it all unboxed. Our 7.7 .7 kilohertz Technetics Omega 8500. Got our literature right here. Two rubber washers inside the little baggie here for the owner's manual. They go right in the end of the lower rod there. You can see. The washers just slide right in that little recess spot there. So there is the lower polycarbonate rod there. The upper rod aluminum right here. Our 10-inch waterproof concentric search coil. A great coil right here. A very good coil. Threaded locking collar on it. 5-pin XLR connection. We have the little coil bolt right there for you as well. And let's check it out here with the arc stand right here on bottom to keep it upright. So it sits. it just sits right there on the ground like that. And look at that, it stays right upright for you. Got the arm strap here, padded, what's, what's it called? Arm cuff, padded arm cuff, boy, brain fart right there. Padded arm cuff, aluminum rod, we're going to go up here. The Technetics have this nice foamy pistol grip on them. I like it. The S rod is on most of the Bounty Hunter and Fisher ones, but a lot of these Technetics, they use this nice pistol grip on it. I do prefer it. It is pretty darn nice though. I do like it. I do prefer it. So there is the threshold knob right there, nice and clicky. The gain knob, nice and clicky. The buttons, got that tactile feedback, ground grab, pinpoint menu, plus, minus. And then on the side here, quarter inch headphone jack, a little dust cover right there, just pops right in, a little rubber dust cover. Nine volt battery, Let's see if I can slide it off right there. Nine volt battery compartment right on the back there. There is your coil connection over on the left-hand side. You can see the five-pin XLR connection. A little uh, Velcro strap thing for the upper coil. And there is a cable. And there is one on the bottom there for the lower end of the cable. Just connected around the lower rod there. And this one goes up top to keep it nice and tight once you've wound it around. The threaded locking collar right here. And you see one as well where the lower rod enters into the upper rod right there. So it's nice and tight. No wobble. None of that nonsense here. So there it is. The Technetics 8500. What do you say we go throw the 9-volt battery in it, run through the menu system, and then uh, run through some testing? Coming at ya. All right, here we go with the menu set up. Faceplate feature setup of this here, Technetics Omega 8500. Left-hand side here, we see the gain knob here. We're going to click that, and that powers it on. We see it goes 0, 4, 20 are the first two numbers that flash. So 4, 20, that is your date code. 
So I know this is an April of 2020 detector. If I want to factory reset it, I hold down pinpoint, turn it on. We see 01, let go. And now it's going to cycle through my date code again. And now I know it's factory reset straight out of the box here. So the gain right here, I change the knob. It'll go from one all the way up to 99. And then you hear it popping and chattering at 99. We'll take it back down to one just for the sake of the video here. Our right hand knob, we see disc up in the top right corner. We are in discrimination mode. I click the thresh knob and now it is threshold. Why? Because we are now in AM for all metal. And it goes from negative nine all the way up to positive three. You can adjust your threshold right there. Click it down to six o'clock and we are back down into our discrimination mode. We have a battery meter right there. We see three bars right there, good to go. And then our ferrous mineralization meter here on the left from L low to H high. It'll fill in with bars right here as you go from low to high. Conductivity scale in the middle from iron, foil, nickel, pull tab, screw cap, zinc, dime, quarter. So this is ferrous non-ferrous your conductivity scale from left to right right there okay and at bottom left we have ground air it's showing that we are positive if the bars are showing up down here it's saying that you are negative on your ground balance i don't pay too much attention to that you can ground balance and then you'll see them right away as you move your coil over a couple feet um i don't Grain of salt with that little readout here. Um, your zero to 99 will be right in the middle here. Um, see as I move the gain there, your ID is gonna show up right there as well. When you ground balance, pinpoint, anything like that, it's gonna show up there. If I hit pinpoint, we'll see depth 10, 10 inches right there. Um, so that's where everything shows up on your zero to 99 scale. So let's check out the menu here. Right hand box here is gonna be menu. It does have a depth meter as well that shows up right in here as well. So let's hit menu. Let's scroll all the way up to the top menu, disc level. So we can hit plus or minus here. We're already at zero, so we'll hit plus, hold it down, and we'll watch the conductivity scale go away there see it you can go all the way up to 80 it stops you dimes are about 82 83 on your id it stops right beneath them at 80 and now they're gone so we'll hit minus and you'll see everything come back in so discrimination is left to right on the scale all right from zero to 80 we hit menu again we go down to notch now notch is the same as discrimination basically but look we can leapfrog our categories now see how they flash and then I hit menu again as they're flashing. I hit plus or minus to cycle through them and then hit menu and see them disappear. So now nickels are gone. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, pull tabs are gone. You definitely would want to do that. So it, it's kind of a neat way to just cycle through without discriminating certain things and discriminating other things. So that's how notch menu works right there. If it's gone, it's gone. And if it shows up, it shows up. So. Uh, we'll go we'll go back through here uh, and put them back in maybe so we're at volume we can go from 10 all the way down to zero and you don't have to stop you can just keep going and it cycles back around to 10 so if you're all the way down to one it'll stop at one but just click it again and you're back around to 10 on your volume so there's your volume meter default at seven we'll leave it at that so deep you have zero one two three so deep zero is going to be your least amount of depth. So just think about, about that. Deep zero, least amount of depth, super fast recovery speed, blazing fast recovery speed. It's definitely what you're going to want to use in trashy spots is deep zero. So we cycle through to deep one. That's deeper, okay? But not quite as fast recovery speed. This is deep. Deep one is pretty much your general all around everyday setting, okay? We go up to deep two. That's going to give you a 60 hertz filter for EMI and kind of like a boost in depth, okay? Quite a bit slower recovery speed, though. You're going to have to sling, swing your coil quite a bit slower in deep two and deep three. Deep two and three are the same, except deep two is a 60 hertz filter. Deep three is a 50 hertz filter, okay? Read the manual. It explains what they do. It definitely helps with EMI. Uh, deep two is usually what I, what I run with if I'm looking for the deeper targets, deep two. And then if I want that fast recovery speed, I go over to deep zero right there, okay? Tones, D5 through D1. D1 is gonna be all VCO tone across the board. That zip, 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 that duck fart, duck quack sound. That's gonna be all the way across the board, no matter what 
what ID you're at, what range you're in, that is going to be the Duck Quack VCO modulated audio in D1. Now D2 is modulated audio as well, except it's a bass tone for iron and everything else is going to be low tone. So super low tone, bass tone for iron, and everything else low tone. I guess a Relic Hunter would want to play with that. Let's go back into the notch here um, and, and move everything back in real quick. Just for the sake of the video here. There we go. There we go. So everything's notched back in there. Now, now I can show you. So in D2 tone, so bass tone, low, 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 all the way across. Uh, D1, VCO tone for everything, even, even for iron. So let's go up to D3. Now in D3, it's going to be bass tone for iron, low tone for foil, low for nickel, low for pole, low tone for everything else, and then high tone, high tone for diamond quarter. Okay, so remember D2 is going to be low tone for everything Base tone for this, go up to D3, it's going to be bass tone, low tone, low tone, low tone, low tone, low tone, high tone, high tone, okay? <laughs> That's D3. D4, bass tone, low tone, mid tone on your nickels, low tone, low tone, low tone, high tone, high tone. So D4 for you coin hunters, mid tone on nickels, high tones on dime quarters, low tones on your zinc screw cap pull tabs, low tone on foil, and bass tone on iron. Now, five is the exact same as four, except it is not modulated. Everything else is modulated audio. D1, D2, D3, D4, all modulated audio, meaning the deeper the target or the smaller the target, the lower the audio report or volume. The bigger the target, the shallower the target, right on the surface, it's gonna blow your headphones out. Deeper fringe targets are gonna be that little whispery beep or whispery tone. So it's an audio depth discriminator and size discriminator for your ears, basically. D5 is going to be no proportional audio. Everything's gonna come in full blast, bass tone, low tone, mid tone, low, 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 high, high. Okay, so that's basically how, how it's going to play out as far as the tone setup and the tone breaks go. So that's it for the tones. Frequency shift, one, two, three. You can shift through three different frequencies if you're getting a lot of EMI or there's another detector around you that's giving you trouble. So let's go over to the all metal mode real quick. And there ha we have a different menu setting here. Um, we're going to go through here. Oh, and we have a backlight too. So that, yeah, let's not forget about that. We have backlight. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. We see it glowing red. That will eat your battery for sure. It goes up to five, zero being off. So there's the backlight. So while in all metal mode, while in all metal mode, I want you to go into ground and there is your ground balance setting right there. See, we can go from 99 all the way down to zero to salt. It will ground balance all the way down to salt for you beach hunters. It won't quick grab. I don't. I want to say it will not quick grab that low, but it will ground balance manually down to zero right there for you, you uh, beach hunters. Okay, so we go down again. After ground, we have tone. So A one, two, three, four. That is the VCO tone. All right, the VCO tone in all metal and the VCO tone in discrimination mode both. That is the pitch of it. So A1, it's like it'll go from low to higher to higher to a high pitch, it's like a zip zip to a quack, quack, quack sound. All right. So I can't demonstrate it right now. Um, and I don't think I did in the other segments. Play with it yourself. There, there are certain things that you need to see yourself and play with yourself. Right. It, it brings the joy out for you. So there you go. Um, so there you go. You need to be in all metal mode to change the tone set up there. OK. Now, one more thing in disc mode here. If I go to volume. All right, so my volume right now is seven, right? Let's change it up to 10 just to make it easier for the math. We're at volume 10, right? Volume 10. If I, if while I'm in volume mode set here, if I hold down pinpoint, see how it's flashing now? And I can get it to say negative one, negative two. If I keep hitting pinpoint, I can scroll through these. Iron, foil, nickel and I can adjust my volume based off my master volume of 10. Remember my master volume of 10 
So now I can change my iron level to minus four, minus five, so now my iron's at five. It's based off whatever your volume setting is. So if I'm at negative seven here, so let's say I go through all of these, so my volume's at seven, now iron's muted, why? Because I hit pinpoint, iron is at negative seven. Foil's at negative five, so now it's a two. So you have to do the math based off your master volume right here, just regular volume. So once you're in volume, let's say you're at seven, I can go hit pinpoint, and now I can change my volume for each of my notch setups here. Each of my sections, my categories for the notch, I can adjust the volume. So now this one's muted because it's at negative seven while my volume is at seven. So you have to remember, whatever your master volume is at, so if it's at seven, oh, you gotta be in the volume menu, hit pinpoint. Now that's at negative seven, so that's muted. Let's say I want to go up to have foil, um, just negative five, that's good. Nickels, I want full blast. Pull tabs, I don't really wanna hear those. So let's run those at negative six, so they'll be at a one. Screw caps, let's run those negative six, so that they're at a one. So zinc, let's run that at a negative three, so that they're at a four. Dime quarters, I wanna hear those full blast. Nickels, I wanna hear those full blast. So everything else, you can adjust how loud they come in based off the master volume. So the negative number is minus that number off of this master volume number, okay? It's pretty simple math when you wrap your head around it. A little confusing at first, once you wrap your head around it, really easy stuff here. So that's pretty much the menu of the Technetics Omega 8500. I don't think I left anything out. Like I said, read the manual five times, six times to get all this information wrapped around your head. It can be a little bit complicated for a beginner, but once it clicks, boy, it clicks quick. I mean, the, the, the volume thing's real easy. It's just minus whatever your master volume is. The notch thing's pretty easy to, to cycle through. So it's not a, comp once you get the tone set up and everything, trust me, it clicks real good. So let's go run it through some testing and uh, see how it performs. Coming at you. All right, got it maxed out right here. The 10 by five by five coil. And uh, so not a huge coil. It's only 10 inches long by 5.5 inches wide. Keep that in mind, concentric coil here, elliptical concentric, not a huge coil. Um, so don't expect these crazy 16, 17 inch numbers with those, like those big round 11, 12 inch coils here. This is a concentric elliptical, much better in heavy trash, uh, trash type work like that. So here we go, usual suspects, three silvers. We got a Indian head, a wheat scent, a nickel there, a V nickel, and then we have a silver ring, a gold ring, and a button. We'll make it quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I have it maxed out to 99. It's popping and spitting just a little bit. It is in the deep two mode, which is the 60 hertz filter on it. And then it is in the D1 tone mode. It gets a little complicated here. The D1 tone mode, which is all VCO tone all the way across the board, super modulated audio. So let's listen. Let's try it with the silver dime here. So hear that? Kind of fades out. All right, so I like hunting with that. It's what I grew up with, so to speak. Um, I got it on the, all the way on the high pitch right there so we can really hear it nice and well during the video here. So Silver Dime, let's find out what it can do here. I'll try to go quick. Looks like we're getting about out to 10 inches before it really starts to break up. Pretty repeatable at nine, 10. Quarter. And we're starting to break up at 12, so we'll call that 11. Walker, half dollar. We're breaking up at 13, 12. Fairly repeatable at 12. But it's still pretty fringy, so 11 for sure. Let's try the Indian Head Penny, kind of a mid-high conductor range, right on the brink. And we're getting clear out to, yeah, again, about 11 inches, right about 11 inches. So pretty good for that coil size. 
copper penny. Yep, 10, 11. Let's try a nickel. Midconductor, a lot of mass. 10, 11. Yep, and breaking up at about a foot. So it seems like we're pretty good out to about a foot or so, and then it starts to break up on most coin size objects. Big old silver ring. Yep, same deal. And the thin, man, look how thin that is. Super thin gold ring, 10K. And we're breaking up at about 10 on that one. And last but not least, this tiny little button here. This little eagle button right here. Look at that old sucker. Let's try that. And we're good out to repeatable hits at 9 and breaking up at 10. So there you go, small stuff like a button. You're looking at eight, nine inches with this coil on the air tests and most coin size objects, even the larger ones, you're good at 10, starting to break up at that 11, 12 inch range, uh, a foot maximum on it. That's pretty decent though. Keep in mind, that's only a 10 by five coil. So pretty good. It's that football size. You know, it's not these big 11 inch rounds or these 11 by seven, 11 by eights or whatever. So there we go. On to the next bit and just to show you guys real quick it does do normal digital multi-tones like I said mid low mid high and all that so here's the gold ring here is the nickel and then silver so it does do you know low mid high low mid high and it's proportional too listen loud pretty neat pretty neat all righty recovery speed we see the four dimes right there they are right at less than coil width apart less than coil width apart so in d1 two or three, a normal swing. We get them, but they start to mesh with anything faster. Anything faster, listen. That's just one tone. So if we go down to D zero though, let's listen now. Really fast, blazing fast recovery speed. So good stuff. It definitely has a recovery speed if you need it, and it has the deeper modes if you need that. You can't have both in most scenarios. Recovery speed and depth are a trade-off, so it is somewhat adjustable. All right, three types of bottle caps here. Look, we got a crown cap right here that still has the shine on it. Still, still a steel bottle cap. This one's dented in, got a little rust showing on it. This one is quite flattened out and quite rusty as well. Elliptical concentric on this 8500. 90% of the time I use a DD. These sound like dimes and quarters. That's why they're here on the box. I dug these. I absolutely dug these. Um, so they sound really good. Let's see what they sound like on this 8500 with the concentric coil on it here, this elliptical. Well, you wouldn't dig that ever. Nasty. Let's try this one. That's a better sounding one, but as we can see, it's all over the screw cap range, down to nickel, pull tab range, bouncy, bouncy. You're not going to dig that either. Let's go over here. Let's check out this one. Again, we're getting that nasty, oh, overloading. We're getting that nasty iron down in the 40s down in the 30s on this one and these all rang up 
Look at that one, all over the board. These all rang up like dimes or quarters for me at one point. Not on this one. I consider this to be a very good park coin shooter. Uh, very good. Just for this reason right here, you're going to see me using this one coming up at that old park. Uh, that's for sure. A lot of bottle caps there. The DD coils can frustrate you for sure. Um, this one's got that nice size concentric on it. So, yeah, I definitely consider this to be a good coin shooter. It's got that decimal ID. You can silence all the notches uh, by volume. Very neat feature. Um, with no disc, so it's not discriminating. It's just silencing the notches one by one. I, I really like that. I, I, good coin shooter. Good coin shooter. You're going to see this one coming up quite a bit, I think. All right, Monty's nail board test right here. Let's listen. No notch, no disc. We are listening to the iron come through. And it's from... The 20s clear up to the 30s, but for the most part, it's 20, 22, 23, 24 range. All right, let's pop that down. We see you got two nails here on the long one right here. I didn't quite have a long enough square nail, so we're making do. We're making do. Let's pop down the penny there in the middle. Come back up and let's listen now. So it, it likes it and hates it. <laughs> That's what I've learned about this test. You definitely can hear the coin popping through, but the iron, number two, it does not like it. The iron overtakes the coin on number two. You can hear it popping through on four. Definitely hear the coin popping through. Just not that super pronounced beep, beep, beep or anything like that. So you can definitely hear it. Is it the best nail hunter, best nail test performer? No. In my opinion, eh, it hits about 70%, 75% on this test. So you hardcore beta nail relic hunters, probably not going to be too impressed. However, you trashy park guys like me, that's what I like to do. Um, some people like Coke, some people like Pepsi. I like to hunt parks and schools and coin shoot. I just like to go clad stab, find old coins if I can, you know, silver, wheat pennies, uh, Indian heads. That, that does it for me. It does it for me. Some of you guys want to go find buttons and trinkets and old 1700s, 1800s stuff. Probably not the best nail hunter. Probably a very good park hunter. We saw how it did on the bottle cap test. We know it has that decimal point on the ID. We know we can notch volume all these quarters, screw caps, pull tabs, whatever we want. It's set up for a park. You find these things at a park. You don't usually find these things at an old relic site in most cases, right? Right. So it is what it is. If you wrap your head around thinking this is a great park coin machine, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. You hardcore relic hunters, Probably want to move on to a different machine. I'm going to be using this on video quite a bit coming up. I really enjoy this detector. Me being a park guy, I think it's going to do great. Especially that old 120-year-old park I hunt. And has a ton of bottle caps. ton of bottle caps. So, pretty excited. Want to pick one of these bad boys up? 7.7 .7 kilohertz, one 9-volt battery, super ergonomic. 10 by 5 elliptical concentric search coil. Hit me up, thehuntergt at gmail.com or thehuntergt.com. Fill out the contact form. We can talk shop. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video.